I truly feel like I am living in the future. I've spent essentially probably a total of 30 hours figuring out a completely seamless workflow to be shooting with my main workhorse camera, the Canon R3. Uh, as I'm shooting, select and send any image on my memory card directly to mid-journey to get an AI render of the scene that then gets sent right to a folder on my phone. Now, the first thing that you're probably thinking is, why might I do this? One of the big advantages of having really powerful AI generation models like Midjourney is that it can inspire you to take a new direction in your work. I posted a video from a month ago about trying to do this with your iPhone where you take a picture of the scene and then you send it to Midjourney and then you get the results and then you can see if it gives you some interesting new perspective on the composition or the lighting that you can then go with your actual camera in real life and maybe not even recreate, but just use as a starting point for something you otherwise wouldn't have thought of. The workflow with just using your iPhone for that is actually really clunky and a lot more manual than what I figured out here. This video is not gonna deconstruct the entire workflow process yet. It is extremely complex. I literally had to relearn how to code a bit, uh, a lot in Python and a little bit in JavaScript and combine it with some Zapier automations. It was a lot of work, but it's very seamless. The only X factor and variable is having an active hotspot to connect to, which is why I bought this. This is a very expensive, but super reliable multi-network hotspot that works internationally. Um, yeah, it's really good. But if you're at home and you're working to set something like this up yourself eventually, a home Wi-Fi network is a good stable thing to use. But once you're out in the, the wild, you're gonna want a really reliable hotspot. Okay, so here's a demo of the entire workflow. Uh, old school patrons will recognize these little mannequin dolls that I used to use when I was first starting for many years to just practice composition and posing uh, because I didn't wanna only and ever practice when I had a real life couple in front of me. I'd like to be prepared and work the muscle memory of how you can arrange uh, just human bodies together in just different interesting ways. Uh, just for this demo of the entire workflow. This is my couple in front of me. The session is happening. Uh, you can do this at any point. Uh, some people are stuck immediately and have no idea what to do. Uh, or maybe you shoot for a while and by the end of the session, you still have a lot of time to fill, but you're um, you know, running out of inspiration and stuff like that. At some point, we all get a little bit stuck. So let's just pretend that for whatever reason, I'm stuck and don't know what to do with this couple. I'm gonna take a picture of them. I don't know maybe two different compositions, something like that. I can just scrub through the back of my camera. All I have to do is pick the one that I wanna send and hit set. I can actually send more than one at a time if I want. Then I just have to wait. Uh, it takes about, I don't know, less than a minute for the files to actually get sent to my FTP server. Then it gets sent to Midjourney, and then it takes about two minutes to get the generated result back from Midjourney uh, to see if it just sparks any new ideas. So I am in Dropbox right now and I already got the first two photos. So this is the, um, yeah, these are the two raw images. They are just lightweight, super small JPEG files. Not a big, you don't have to do raw or anything like that. And now happening behind the scenes on Midjourney, it's creating a render for each of those photos. And what's really cool is the final output that it gives you um, actually gives you four different variations. So hopefully one of those four, if not all of them, will give me some idea about how to reposition or change the composition in some way if I wanted. Um, just to go through some other examples while we are waiting of what I've sent it previously, um, Ooh, actually I was talking to my friend Nathan about it and this is a really good example. So I sent it a source file, not directly from my camera, but that, you know, it was just a JPEG from another session. Uh, and this was the AI um, output. These are the variations that it gave me in how to position the couple, uh, either themselves within the frame or the use of the light, uh, a lot of different ways. Uh, to interpret that scene uh, from the AI. Again, using this source photo of mine, which I was actually pretty happy with, but in the moment, maybe I could have done more with the, with the positioning, I don't know. After two minutes, it just gave me the AI variations and renders. So it's a little confused about the fact that it's not real people and it's a weird mannequin. Some of these are strangely suggestive. But this one on the bottom left of them kind of walking together, um, I actually really like. Like if this was a really static pose, which it kind of is, obviously they're not real human bodies, that is triggering uh, my imagination a little bit to uh, just have them suddenly start walking. It's so funny how realistic the uh, wooden mannequin looks in the AI render. But let's try uh, something else. Let's try just 
them perfectly side by side. Obviously, I want to tweak the pose a little bit to be a little more like realistically human. Uh, this is a classic one of just two people uh, side by side holding hands, staring at the camera. So uh, let's let's try that. They're not actually holding hands, so I hope it doesn't get too confused. I already got the first um, original JPEG file here. So this is what the source photo is, and this is what the other source photo is. This one is probably going to be a little confused by, but I think that first one it'll probably give me something interesting to play with. Again, I have to stress, there is a ton of work happening behind the scenes to allow this to happen. Thankfully, once it's all set up and working, it's completely automated and I really don't have to do anything to think about it other than make sure I have a Wi-Fi connection and everything has enough battery power and all that. It is quite a list of services you need working uh, together in order to pull this off. Here we go. All right, so those two are kind of weird. This though, does spark uh, an interesting idea. This bottom right uh, one for me uh, is the fact that I was picturing them both facing me, um, kind of face forward, uh, but having one face forward uh, and one turned away to the side is a very different feel. And I do that a lot, but I sometimes forget and would not have thought to do that in this situation. Obviously they don't have faces on here, so it's a little hard to demonstrate that. The last thing I wanna try is, is actually going back and finding a source photo uh, with an actual couple. So I'm just looking through a wedding that I just shot. Um, just again, if I had them in front of me still and I had this whole workflow figured out, this, this would be much more useful than doing it two days later. But just for the demo, I wanna see how well it does with an actual you know human couple uh, in the scene. So, all right, I'm transferring uh, one of the images that I chose. It's the exact same thing. It's gonna wirelessly send to Dropbox the original image. We'll look at that. And then about a minute after that, it'll show us an AI render of, of some other potential ideas. Um, as I'm waiting for these files to come through, one thing that's a bit scary is, and, and exciting at the same time, but can be a little bit scary, is with a workflow this seamless, if the mid-journey output, if, mid, if they ever allow mid-journey to become uh, actual photorealistic, to come 100% faithful to the source uh, image where the people look exactly like they do in the photo. Right now, they actively make people look different than they are uh, because there's a lot of potential for abuse there. But think about that as a photographer workflow to be able to shoot with any lens and get an AI output that looks insanely high quality with bokeh and sharpness. That could actually be where you stop as a photographer. You get your photorealistic AI render and then you deliver it. Uh, it's kind of crazy to think that a really low quality lens like a 51.8 could generate it to look like it came from a 51.2 RF, uh, which is like a $2,000 lens compared to this 51.8. So there's a ton of possibilities here uh, that's a little scary to think about, but also kind of exciting. It's a topic that really needs to be opened up and discussed a lot more than it actually is. Okay, so by now I'm guessing we should have our output. Yep, here it comes. All right, so we have four variations on how this couple, this is lovely. Um, this is kind of low res for some reason. There we go, now it's higher. Okay, so this absolutely gives me some ideas about how I would otherwise pose them. Have him look at her, uh, her kind of looking at me or a little off camera, have him uh, touch the railing instead of her. Yeah, this is, I think, a lot more useful than the mannequins. I just don't have two people in front of me right now to demo this. So if I was able to do this while shooting with an actual session and get an AI render in about two minutes, um, it's gonna be incredible. My next session, I'm absolutely gonna do this and uh, yeah, re report back with, with the results. So um, hopefully you found this interesting. I know it's kind of a lot to take in. Uh, it's a really exciting and scary time right now. I'm a big believer in using these tools to augment what we're doing in the actual real world um, instead of just hitting a switch and suddenly my creating only AI generated stuff that's 100% fake and stupid. So, all right, thanks everyone. I'll be back soon, bye.